guys, we're here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the 2023 BMW X6 M50i. And a big thanks to Armis and Cameron at BMW of Tampa for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to their inventory below and if you're looking for a new premium or performance vehicle in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and that's for Armis or Cameron. And for those of you guys who don't know, the X6 has been BMW's X5 based mid-sized sports activity coupe since 2008. That's when the first generation was released. Basically the originator of the segment, Acura followed their footsteps the following year with the Acura ZDX. However, that vehicle is not anywhere close to as successful as the X6. The third generation X6 that you see here was released in 2020. A couple subtle changes for 2021 and 2022, but for 2023, no major updates. Available in three different trim levels, starting with the X-Drive 40i. All 2023 BMW X6s come standard with X-Drive. The 40i has a base price of $70,100, but still a loaded vehicle. Coming standard with BMW's glorious B58 3 liter twin power turbo um, inline six cylinder made it to a 48 volt mild hybrid system. Allegedly cranking out 335 horsepower, 332 pound feet of torque. We know that number is probably heavily underrated considering car and driver was able to get this almost 5,000 pound SUV to 60 in 4.7 seconds. So the math just does not add up. We also get 20 inch V spoke rim standard, wood interior trim with Vernasa leather, power tilt and telescoping steering wheel, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, dynamic cruise control, live cockpit pro, adaptive LED headlamps, and a ton of standard safety features such as blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, and forward mitigation, forward collision mitigation with automatic braking. We can upgrade to the M50i that you see here with a base price of $89,100. Now we get the 4.4 liter twin turbo V8, which makes a lot more power at 523 horsepower, 553 pound-feet of torque. Also probably underrated considering you can do 0 to 60. Car and driver tested it at 3.7 to 3.8 seconds. We also get launch control, M Sport exhaust, and differential brakes with an electronically controlled suspension. Also, we get a 464 watt Harman Kardon sound system standard for the M50i. The top of the line X6 for 2023 is the M with a base price of 113,700. Basically the same power plan, but more aggressive tuning with 600 horsepower, 553 pound-feet of torque, and you can expect zero to 60 in the low to mid three second range. I believe car and driver tested it at either 3.3 or 3.4, but this is the M50i with the base price of $89,100. What else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, you notice your flickering LED daytime running lights. They're not actually flickering in real life, just on camera by LED front projector headlamps too, forward facing camera, very aggressive kidney style grill with active shutters too. I like the color too, it has like a subtle bronze and black contrast, radar cruise control house below, full front parking sensing with side sensing which aids with our 360. We do get the 360 here for the M50i with functional airflow for the bottom and side portion. The wheel and tire setup, pretty impressive for the M50i. I kind of wish we had some lower profile tires, but these are all seasons, so I see what they were going with it. We get 20 inch M BMW rims with the gunmetal gray and silver contrast. Pirelli Scorpion Zero all season tires. Some of the more aggressive all seasons dimensions being 275 45 R20s. Really aggressive M Sport brake caliper too, a quad piston up front, five piece lug pattern, but what you see is basically what we get. No plastic cladding either. Functional heat extractor in the corner. Definitely aids with the styling and cooling. I'm liking that bronze trim for the mirror caps. Very subtle and unique, but as you see, it does draw some fingerprints. I haven't touched that yet. I don't know who did, but you can clearly see that somebody has. LED turn signals, black contrast for the bottom portion too. The glass itself fills up the entire frame. Blind spot monitoring on the glass, power folding mirrors, black trim for the window trim, dark tints out rear, blacked out B pillar and C pillar. And I'm definitely appreciative that they don't give us any shiny chrome on the 2023 BMW X6 M50i. The rear wheel and tire setup, same thing, only difference is a smaller single piston brake caliper, but it's still painted blue, which I definitely appreciate. Side sensor for the rear parking sensing. The heat extractor out rear, it does not appear to be functional, but as far as styling, it definitely makes this X6 look a lot more aggressive. Full LEDs for the taillights and reverse light. BMW badge in the center, subtle lip spoiler, which looks pretty cool for an SUV. No rear wiper, additional spoiler up top with a shark fin style antenna. Quad exhaust tips, hopefully I can pick them up for you on camera. They are quads, active exhaust, and they sound pretty good. We'll take a listen in one second, rear view camera. But speaking of the exhaust tips, M50i, let's take a squat back here, fire up this 4.4 liter twin turbo V8, and here she sounds.
All right guys, that was the sound of the 4.4 liter twin turbo M Performance V8 sold by BMW for the 2023 X6 M50i. And it sounds surprisingly good for what it is. It doesn't sound nearly as, as aggressive as a real M car, but still very aggressive for what it is, cranking out 523 horsepower, 553 pound-feet of torque, enough to get this 5,100 pound SUV to 60 in under four seconds. Car and Driver tested it at 3.7 or 3.8, which is really, really fast for a vehicle in this price point and segment. We get cross supports, four sets of supports under the hood, so it'll be really interesting to see how this vehicle can handle. About half of this motor, this V8 motor, is behind the strut tower, so for weight balance, should be fantastic. We get hydraulic struts, of course, for the hood, BMW's latch where you double pull underneath the steering column, and it simply opens up the hood without having to play with any latches down below. One of my favorite setups in the business, but what you see is basically what we get. We can shut this hood right up, take one more step back, get a good look at the front styling of this 2023 BMW X6 M50i. And I know there's no window sticker on this car, so I'll just show you real quick so you can confirm that it is a 2023 BMW X6. Uh, six. I also leave a link to the window stickers. I did take a screenshot from the dealership website. They just don't have one posted on this vehicle itself. But again, I'll leave a link right here. Taking a step inside, we get smart access for the driver and the front passenger. We also get smart access for the rear passengers too. So for all four doors, blind spot monitoring on the glass we didn't mention. Up top, we get soft leather stitch trim, Harman Kardon sound system, two person memory seats, tailgate release. I'm not quite sure what this two button does. You press the button, nothing really changes for the interior, but let me know in the comment section if you guys know, if you're a BMW owner. The X7 we reviewed in this channel also had that same button. More of that really gushy soft leather for the middle portion, gushy soft for the armrest, auto one touch for all four, power folding mirrors, four way adjustable, grab handles also outlined in leather, aluminum trim around it, faux carbon beneath that. Two. Harman Kardon speakers on the door panel, same sound system out of the X7 we reviewed, and it's an impressive, impressive sound system. Soft touch down below. You'll fit two, three foot lungs in this compartment with no problem. Big gulp also with no problem, but make sure the lid is tightly closed because it is very sideways. M50i illuminated aluminum badge. It's not actually blue, that's just the tape. The seats are this beautiful black diamond quilted, heated and ventilated leather seats with adjustable bolsters, adjustable headrests. All the adjustments are down below. Adjustable thigh support ports as well recline drop lift and slide lumbar those buttons right here adjust the bolsters this adjusts the thigh support as you guys can see and this adjusts your headrest very configurable seats very comfortable seats but taking a step inside we can really check it out so engine start stop buttons to the left of the gear selector you can press this engine start stop button and it fires right to life first thing we notice is the bmw m steering wheel it's fantastic as always super thick very fat 10 and 2 bolstering notch 9 and 3 fits perfect in your hands dynamic cruise control is adjustable to the left side of the steering wheel on the right side voice commands you can hang up and answer your phone calls volume and skip controls too the infotainment it's not very configurable you can configure it basically between the radio am fm and sirius you can go side to side and can't really adjust a whole lot outside of the radio itself so we'll leave it there when we transition between comfort sport it changes up slightly this is comfort this is sport plus this is sport individual and this is just regular sport you can throw it back into eco mode see if it changes up it does so now we get a power and battery indicator with a speedometer on the left side x6 m50i in the center in the city we're currently in down below throw it back into comfort mode we'll start the review off in comfort transition into sport and just see what the overall differences are we get these paddle shifters aluminum paddle shifters that control the zf8 speed transmission super snappy perfect combination with this 4.4 liter twin turbo v8 on the left side satisfying click for the turn signals auto high beams auto headlamps too of course all adjustable to the left side interior brightness too power tilt and telescoping steering wheel rain sensing wipers more of that faux carbon trim two sets of air vents to the left of the driver's seat full leather for the dashboard too the 12.3 inch touchscreen it's Relatively new, it's not quite as modern as the new 14.9 inch touchscreen we saw with the facelifted BMW X7, but this is still fantastic. You can take a quick look at the map. Very responsive, just like an iPhone, just as responsive as the 14.9 inch screen. It's just not quite as big, but still really not much of a complaint from me. We can see the adjustments, media, communication, navigation, car, and apps. Car, we can see driving information, vehicle status, settings. 
settings include, we'll see, door, vehicle access, interior lighting, seat comfort, climate control, and key button settings. You press the sport button, now you can configure individual sports. So you press this configure individual, you can adjust the damping. So right now it's set for comfort, steering for sport, engine for sport plus, transmission for sport, and you can reset for sport standard. Press sport one more time, throws us into sport plus, which is our extra dynamic setting, puts all those settings we saw before. Some of them are in comfort, some of them are in sport, but in sport plus, everything is in sport plus. My personal favorite screen to look at at all times would just be this map at all times, more that faux carbon trim, if that's even what you would call it. It does look really cool. It's like an aluminized carbon with a blue interior light right above it. Beneath that, dual zone automatic climate control with heated and ventilated front seats. Presets beneath, more of that aluminized looking carbon trim. We got a wireless charging pad, BMW digital key, two USB port, two cup holders with these shark fin style pushy things to keep the drinks in place. The gear selector controls the eight-speed ZF transmission. We get manual shift controls on the gear selector in the proper direction if you don't want to use your aluminum paddle shifters. Personally, I enjoy using the aluminum paddle shifters. You throw it right back in the park and the vehicle returns to park. You can check out the backup camera by throwing it into reverse. I apologize when I said we had a 360. I really thought we did, but it's just front and rear parking sensors. Still do the job, you get guidance lines and trajectory for the backup camera, guidance lines and trajectory for the front and rear for the parking sensor image. But unfortunately, we're in park right now and we're still looking at the backup camera and parking sensor. So to return to the home screen, you gotta press the home button just like with all the BMW cars. If you don't wanna go through the touch screen, we get a dial right here with shortcuts, media, home, map, communication, and navigation back in option two. Sport, comfort, eco pro, hill descent control, auto hold for the electronic parking brake, a little bit of piano black within the inside of this faux aluminum trim. Gushy soft for your knee will often hit. Gushy soft for the armrest too. The center console, you can check out the space. It is decently spacious. I'd expect you to fit six, maybe seven, 12 ounce water bottles with a USB-C port in there, as well with a cubby light too. The glove box, the outside of it is soft touch materials. You can pull the latch, aluminum latch. It's damp, lined with felt and massive. You're fitting 35, maybe 40 license plates in this thing. Very impressive to shut this thing right up. Frameless rear view mirror with three garage home link settings on it. The interior lights are LED. We get a panoramic moonroof. You can open up the shade, it opens up pretty quickly. Two panels of glass. The second panel is not that large because of the slope in the roof. We can open up this first panel. It opens up decently quickly. Nice, see if it goes out any further. It does. Cool, wow, so all the way out to the end of the front row. We can poke our way out of here. It's a pretty nice day today, it's cloudy, but the weather is nice in Tampa, Florida, about 79 degrees according to this X6 M50i. We can shut this moonroof right up. We'll leave the shade open so when we hop out back, you can get a good idea of how much light is brought into the cabin. But that's about it for the front seat of the 2023 BMW X6 M50i. It's impressive in here. You got just about all the features you could possibly want or need. We get heated and ventilated seats. The seats are unbelievably comfortable. Great steering wheel, great materials, great sound system. Performance-wise, I'm excited to take this thing out for a drive. We got over 500 horsepower. Twin turbo BMW V8. How could it not be a blast? But out rear, again, we get smart access. Out rear too. We don't get dual pane windows up front or out rear for the BMW X6 like we did for the X7. The sunshade is not a power sunshade. It's all manual, but we still get that gushy soft leather up top, aluminum door handle, two Harman Kardon speakers on the door panel. Pretty soft for the armrest, not quite as soft as it was up front. The middle portion is also pretty soft. Auto one touch for the windows. The bottom portion is soft touch. That's an appreciated touch. We can get at least a foot long, possibly two for this little storage area and at least a 20 ounce water bottle right next to it. M illuminated badge as we step inside, more diamond quilted leather seats. The padding goes out all the way to the door frame, so very couch-like seats. They're not adjustable like they were in the X7, at least not for the recline function. The slide function is also not adjustable. But taking a step inside, we can really check out this interior. So I still have plenty of leg room. I'm a little bit over six feet tall headroom. I have at least an inch, maybe two. So the slope in the roof does not really compromise that much headroom. So if you're under six foot four ish, six foot five, you should be able to sit behind your seat settings with no problem. USB C port with some interesting storage location right in front of it. Map box behind both of the front seats. Third zone climate control. We don't get heated or cooled rear seats, but again, not really a big deal. Nice solid storage pocket right above your 12 volt air vents. Pretty good light brought into the cabin thanks to this twin panel moonroof. The interior lights are LED. But that's about it guys for this 
back seat, the cubby back here has a string, so you have to jab your hand into it, very similar to the X6. You get two 12 ounce cup holders with some storage. It's just not lined with felt like it was in the X7, not the X6, I apologize guys. We're putting this thing right back, that's about it for the back seat. We can hop out into the cargo space real quick, see how much space is offered back there, and then take this 2023 X6 M50i out for a drive. So underneath this area that's next to your backup camera, I'm not quite sure what to call it. You have the button to open up your electrically opening tailgate. And as you see, the floor is large, very similar to an X5. It's just we don't get that little tailgate drop down that the X5 offers. The X5 is more practical. It's much more pet friendly, but if you don't have any pets, you don't really care about the cargo space out rear. You just prefer the styling of this SAV coupe definitely go for the X6, but check this out. We have some secret storage and it has hydraulic damping. So it stays up and that's a massive, massive secret storage compartment. You can probably fit a suitcase or two, at least a backpack, maybe a small carry-on luggage. You can probably fit two of them next to each other. Very impressive secret storage, some electric fuse box stuff going on on the side. Interesting, but what we see is basically what we get down here. The storage itself is impressive. You can drop the seats down 40, 40, 20, and I'd expect you to fit at least the 65, 70, maybe 75 inch TV back here. TV wise, this is just as practical as an X5. It's just pet wise and height wise, it just isn't really comparable. But again, what you see is basically what we get. We can press the button, shut down the trunk. It's impressive back here. The styling is impressive, but practicality wise, again, you want the extra cargo space without the sloped coupe style roof. Go with the X5. The X5 is also a couple thousand bucks cheaper compared to the X6, but this is a nicer looking SUV, but basically the same size floor, just a little bit of a compromise for the slope in the roof line for the cargo space, barely even a compromise for the second row seat. But again, M50i, that's what this thing's all about. The 4.4 liter twin turbo V8, it's all about performance. And speaking of performance, oops, I almost tripped over this cone. But anyway, speaking of performance, let's take this thing out for a drive. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the 2023 BMW X6 M50i. Let's take it out for a drive. We'll have a chance to merge onto this highway as soon as we get the chance. We'll start off in comfort. We'll transition to sport and see what the differences are in acceleration, but we'll open her up right here as soon as we get the chance. I'm not quite sure what that guy was doing, but okay. All right, guys, coming out here in comfort mode. We're not going to gun it because there's a cop right there but like halfway, oh my gosh, this thing just absolutely takes off. We gotta merge. All right, one time passing power and comfort. Oh my God. Oh. Wow, this thing can take off. It's not gonna be as quick as like an X5M or an X6M, but it's got a very similar power delivery. It puts you in the seat and it takes off. I wanna try one off the line because obviously like a 60 to 85 pole isn't where a 5,000 pound SUV shines, but dear Lord, does this thing pull hard. And in comfort mode, the steering feels light. We'll see the differences in one second. The throttle, it still feels very sensitive in comfort, but in sport, the throttle gets more aggressive. We'll try it out in sport. Okay, sport plus, the steering gets a little heavier, not much. It's still not a very heavy steering rack. Comparable to the X7 we just reviewed in this channel, it's not nearly as heavy as like an M5 competition. Try out these paddles. Sounds pretty good. All right, taking a step out here, we should be able to try one out in first gear. Let this guy walk by. Typical Florida man right there in first gear on the gas. Oh my God. Good Lord, it yanked my camera back. I felt it hit me in the top of the head. That was a snappy acceleration. That's what this thing's about, zero to 60 in the three second range. Like, ooh, gosh, this thing is a monster. I hope we can try a couple more out. Hopefully that cop changed locations when we return because I would like to go back there at least once. But one more time, first gear. We got a red light coming up, but first gear. Oh, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> it's so fast. Brakes work real good too. And the engine sounds good. It doesn't sound anywhere near as good as the M cars, but it's, it sounds like a toned down version of one. So if you're the kind of guy that likes the performance, you want to go zero to 60 in under four seconds, but you just don't like loud engine noise, this might be the perfect compromise for you because even in sport mode, the engine noise really isn't all that loud. Partial throttle. It's responsive and it does have a nice growl too. I'm not going to say it doesn't sound good. It's just not very loud. 
And when you don't, when you ignore the paddles for more than a second or two, it starts to shift automatically for you again. So we can throw this thing into the manual shifts. Now we're in S, so it will stop shifting for us. Another thing I noticed, the ride quality is good. The 45 series sidewall tires help the ride quality noticeably, but it's still not as good as the X7 with the air suspension. Wouldn't be expected. I mean, not only does this not have the air suspension, it has an M Sport Tune suspension. So you would expect to have a little bit stiffer of ride quality, but it's really not unbearable. The ride quality overall is still pretty comfortable. All right, guys, we can try a little third gear pull over here. Oh, good God. We can try one more out in second gear. Slow down a little bit. Second gear. <laughs> I love this thing. These V8 engines from BMW are just something else. They have low end torque, they have high end power. Everything about them is just magnificent. Yes, we're approaching $100,000 for an SUV. It's pretty expensive. Let's not pretend that it isn't. But you get so much performance for the money, throwing it in way quicker than we should. Body roll just does not exist. And stepping out. Come on, man. You didn't see me coming. All right, guys, off the line, we'll try a slight little brake torque and let's go. Oh my God. Oh my God. Woo, we had a little wheel spin off the line. The traction control kicked in. So I guess we could try it with the auto launch. All right, guys, no launch, just off the line on the gas. Oh. Oh my God, guys, this thing is just such an absolute monster. I mean, we drove the X5M competition on this channel, and yeah, it was a little bit more aggressive than this, but really not by much. I mean, the M50i, you're saving 30 grand compared to the M, and you're only compromising like a little bit of performance. Like, this has 90% of the performance that the M car has. It's just ridiculous, guys. The thing just takes off. No burbles or anything in the exhaust. The M competition cars have the burbles in the exhaust. So it's just, it's not as aggressive, but for daily driving, I mean, what do you need more aggressive than this for? This thing throws you in the seat like an absolute B060 under four seconds consistently. What more do you need? Hopefully you can try out a couple more acceleration runs and get this thing back to Tampa BMW. And huge thanks to them again for making this review possible. I have a blast. Anytime I drive any BMW car, especially if there's an M, anywhere in that BMW car. They just put such a smile on my face. All right, guys, taking a step back out here. Probably one last time. First gear. <laughs> Absolute beast, but we can throw this thing right back into comfort mode. We don't need to push it a whole lot farther than that. Oh my God, I had so much fun driving this car. For a vehicle under $100,000, under $90,000 for the base price, you get so much for the money. I personally would still probably go for the X5 M50i, go with the extra practicality. So if you don't need the practicality, you don't have pets, you don't plan on putting tall objects in the cargo space, and you prefer the styling of the X6, no brainer, I would definitely recommend checking out the 2023 BMW X6 M50i. And I would, I would encourage you to go with the M50i because with the M, yeah, you're, it's a nicer vehicle, it's more powerful, it's a little bit more aggressively tuned, and everybody knows the M. The M50 kind of has like that bargain brand reputation to it, but considering the fact that you're saving $25,000 compared to an M, you're still doing zero to 60 in under four seconds consistently. At the end of the day, you can always do a tune and an exhaust on the M50i, and you'll have a nicer sounding engine and probably more power at the end of the day compared to the M. So if you're looking for a spacious two-row SUV, mid-size SUV, but you like the coupe-like styling, I would definitely recommend checking out the 2023 BMW X6 M50i. And a big thanks to Aramis and the rest of the management and staff here at BMW of Tampa for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to their inventory below, and if you're looking for a new premium performance vehicle in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And as for Aramis, and huge thanks to all of you for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you, and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you'd like to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day.